Cody Quattlebaum, and uh, this is my wonderful pianist, Michal Biu. And uh, today I would like to sing Rome in the Cafe by John Musto. John here? Yes? Our wonderful composer. Thank you so much for that song. I, I, you know, it's wonderful when we get to sing for the people who wrote this gorgeous music. And it's also terrifying. <laughs> and, and also to teach people that music when the composers are sitting in the room is really terrifying. So if I say anything that's offensive, I love you all and I'll take you out for a drink afterward or something. <laughs> okay? Um, beautiful, so wonderful, so conversational from both of you. Such terrific listening. <laughs> just, no, no, just beautiful. It's okay. All right, did I make you nervous now? To cry again. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. It's wonderful. When things like that happen, do you want to explain what happened? Yeah, we, we lost, uh, or I lost, then she cries again, and then uh, I introduced him as my wonderful pianist because he taught me. Yes! <laughs> Magnificent! You know, once I was doing uh, um, my, my A recital in college, I was singing the, the, um, the Gypsy Songs of Brahms, yes? And I love these songs. And I've been singing them with my pianist for a very long time. And his name was Mark Armstrong. He was the most glorious person. And Mark played these songs from memory. And in the middle of the concert, he jumped a whole song. 
And I was furious. And inside I'm going, why didn't you use the music for God's sake? And then all of a sudden, about four measures in, I realized I had skipped an entire song. <laughs> and he was so on the ball, he just began. It took him three, three beats and he was right on top of it. You were, what wonderful listening. Did any of you know? I, yes, I, I realized. Someone, <laughs> someone did know. But this is an excellent example of being in the moment and being present. Always, when, before I sing, I pray one big thing, other than please let me have a voice. <laughs> give me presence of mind. If something happens, give me the presence of mind to know what to do. And it was wonderful. It was seamless, and you didn't stop singing, and you didn't stop. That was wonderful. I loved it. Now, did you choose this song? Yes. Yes. Why? Um, I was told uh, uh, about a few composers that I could pick from, and uh, a bunch of friends had actually suggested to me John Musto. Mm -hmm. um, so I listened to uh, several s songs from uh, Shadow of the Blues, and, uh, and I finally came to this, I don't know how. Uh, I was actually at a friend's house, uh, and over a beer, a friend had suggested it to me that I sing this piece. It's the best way to pick music. Right. <laughs> um, so this was the one I ended up. So you with. learned this song for this class. Yes. Bravo! Excellent. It's wonderful. And do you do you sing a lot of new music? Uh, I did more often. Um, as I as I notice that I get a little busier, I mm -hmm. do less new music. Which Why? Is the I don't know. <laughs> you don't want to tell the cameras? They, they, they don't usually offer new music uh, at, at programs. And, uh, they don't. They what? Yeah, they, so what? But I was, you do it. Yeah. You know, and, and I, bet, I bet from now on you will, Cody. Something tells me. Have you, did you look at this entire cycle? I did. I did. It's brilliant. Yeah. Now, tell me. There are five songs in this cycle. They're poems by uh, James Laughlin and E.E. E. Cummings. Um, and this song, uh, this poetry is James Laughlin. Mm -hmm. So tell me about this poem. So this, this is actually a tough poem to find information about because uh, James Laughlin has this collection of 65 poems that were found from random sources. Uh, at least that's what I found in my study. Um, and they were, you know, kind of taped or pasted to this collection that was found. Um, this collection has uh, poems like A Letter to Hitler. Um, I mean, just all over the map, really. Uh, so I didn't get to read all of them, unfortunately, but... Did you look at a few? Yeah, I, I didn't. He was, you know, but he was more known as a, as a publisher than he was as a poet. I mean, he, he, was, uh, he also had... I mean, he really was to poetry what Gertrude Stein was to art. He was one of the first people who, who really started co making collections. He used his own money, created a publishing company, and he started to publish uh, poets that nobody was publishing yet. So he, he really was a, he was a, um, he, I mean, his first published anthology was 1939. Uh, so he really was, a, um, he broke a lot of ground that way, but he also was an excellent poet. And this is a beautiful poem. So now, Tell me, Cody, when you work, when you learn a song, how do you learn it? What, do you, what are the steps you take? Um, depending on how much time I have. Very good uh, answer. <laughs> let's, let's say that I have, like, ideal amount of time. I like to look at poetry first. I like to understand what's going through the poet's mind, and then I like to see how the art, the uh, composer conceived his or her work based on how they ingested that poetry. Right. Um, so oftentimes I'll find that the composer has a different view than maybe the poet, him or herself, um, uh, at least with what they meant or meant. But I guess I'm just trying to decide mm -hmm. in people's heads now. And and how do you <laughs> and, and in that in that respect, how do you how is this poetry re reconciled with music? Yeah, I, I definitely felt like uh, James Laughlin. Um, might have been a bit younger when, when this, this was happening or the character in the story was a bit younger. Whereas maybe um, based on the music and how it's set, I think John Musto's character is a bit older um, watching this 
uh, back and forth between the, the female and the male. Yeah. That was one major difference that I felt just from reading it and reading it with the music. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. John, is it shadow of your smile? I hear shadow of your smile in this. <laughs> I mean, I just, I, maybe it's because I really love that song, but I, <laughs> the shadow of your smile, I just hear it. It's, it's so, it, I, I, I love this piece because it's so evocative. It actually, that's really an interview, but in an HBO special. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> and now you know. So much the worse for HBO. So tell us about this poem. created a very uh, visual concept of mm -hmm. how I perform it, whereas sometimes it becomes too... Oh, don't get so complicated. Just tell me what happens in the poem. Okay, there's a, a girl that comes in uh, pretty regularly to this cafe in Rome, uh, we're assuming, based on the title. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, You're such a bass baritone. Hey, no. <laughs> uh, so she comes in regularly around the same time, uh, poetry tells us 11 um, and when she comes in she seems upset a man that she's well acquainted with comes in as well and they have an argument of some sort um, she feels uncomfortable with the situation she orders a drink in order mm -hmm. to I guess overcome that situation mm -hmm. uh, as you do and uh, he leaves and the, the, the whole, entire time me the singer I'm watching from afar, and I assume that she knows that I come in, you know, around the same time as her, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm watching the whole thing every time it happens. So that's why in the end I say, yes, I think that she knows that, that you're I'm there. here kind of waiting. I, I just, I, need, I would love to point out to you, just, I, I, I love how you're talking about the poem. Let me just point out that it says, they sit at a table in the back row talking very earnestly, and soon she begins to cry. Does this, does this intimate that there is an argument? Must it be an argument? No. Read this poem out loud. Okay. <laughs> Recite it, please. She comes at 11 every morning to meet a man who makes her cry. They sit at a table in the back row, talking very earnestly. And soon, she begins to cry. He holds her hand and reasons with her as she tries to smile when he leaves her. <clears throat> then she cries again. Mm -hmm. that one, yeah, interesting, right? <laughs> That's a sticking place, go ahead. Then she cries again. And she orders a brandy and gulps it down. Then she makes her face new. Sorry. Then she makes her face new and goes home. Yes, I think that she knows that I come just to watch her and wait for the day that he does not come at all. Great, great, wonderful. So it's very important that we spend as much time with the poetry off of music as we possibly can. Absolutely. Both of us, right? Both of us. We have to spend as much, just a, I'm in the wrong place. We have to spend as much time with the poetry as we can, which obviously you have, but it's because we have to go the way the song is created. The song has created poetry first. So if the composer thinks the poetry is the most important thing, we must think the poetry is the most important thing. Yes? And the thing that's beautiful about this, there's so many ways to read this. You know, she comes into this cafe every day. So clearly, why is she coming in? Is she coming in because she wants to meet this man who makes her cry? Is she coming in because she's hoping he's not going to show up and she's going to be able to talk to you? Um, is he making her cry because they can't be together and they want to be together. Who knows? There's so much to read into this poetry. And what's wonderful about the way the song is set is that it is so unbelievably conversational that while you are singing this, I get this feeling of this 
conversation that is happening in the corner. And, uh, and, you're, and it's beautiful the way you sing it. So that's terrific. There's one thing I'd like to talk to you about, however, in terms of, I mean, in your preparation has been great. And now this time going through, you'll sing all those lines too. It'll be wonderful, <laughs> be even better. By virtue of your voice type, my friend, and I know where I speak because I have the same issue. Because you go from speaking voice to singing voice, you know what I'm going to say? Yes. Uh, make it more common. Make it one or the other. No, that's no. not what I was going to say. What I was going to say was, <laughs> that's why they pay me the big bucks, man. <laughs> the, re the thing is, is that when you go direct, when a, when a, when a bass baritone, baritone, mezzo-soprano goes from singing to from speaking to singing, we have to go from a non-vocalized, non-vibrating speech to a singing one. And that's why voices like ours tend to croon, yeah. right? So we, and crooning is beautiful in its place. It's excellent. But for you, it's not excellent because when you spin the tone, it's twice as beautiful. Okay. And it speaks even mm -hmm. more. Um, and, you, and the thing is, is that when we spin the tone consistently, when we never straighten the tone, then you have something upon which to hang inter interpretation. Mm -hmm. You know, you have something upon which to, um, to create dynamic interest, to create, well, just to create interest and interpretive interest. Straight tone doesn't allow anything to hang on it. It's just straight. And it's, it's wonderful in its place as a texture or a color that you throw in, you know, very, very little by little. Because it can overtake. I mean, it can be the salt or it can be the saffron, right? So let's make it the saffron. Do you like saffron? I didn't like paella. Well, there you go. <laughs> then you know of where, where of I speak, okay? So make sure that every single time you begin to sing, you come, go from a vibrating place, sure. okay? And it doesn't matter how long the note is. If it's a 30-second note, it still has to spin, okay? So let's try it again from the top. Yes, because I want to hear that gorgeous intro again. It was so beautiful. right away. That is so beautiful. Did you hear him vibrate from note to note? Now, do the same thing, but legato, right? Super connected. I don't want to hear one. I, I want to hear the notes go from vibration to vibration and connect them. Sure. Yes? Now, do you, yeah, Beth, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop you again. I do that a lot. I'll just go pop like that, okay? Don't leaven, leaven. You have to spin every note. The minute you, the, the minute you straighten it out, it's immediately half as beautiful, right? I'm, I'm seriously spin the out of these. Yeah. <laughs> the bleepity blops, right? One more time, one more time. So beautiful, so beautiful. Where, 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 are we, where do we find a tenuto mark in that phrase that you just sang? Do you? Just what you just said. Yes, here, look, see, there it is. <laughs> yes. Morning. Now, what are you going to do on a tenuto mark? Yes! <laughs> Let it speak. Let your voice speak. We're okay. still at a mezzo forte.
another place. Every time you have one of these dot, every time, every time you have a note that's slightly longer, you straighten it out mm -hmm. and then you spin into it. Yeah, I, I think I prepared stylistically in the wrong way though. It's, you know what, you can, if, like I said at the top of the class, you know, well, you were back there, so maybe you didn't hear. If what I'm saying, to, if what I'm saying to you, 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 you want to do it, great. If oh, you I don't want, want to sound no, 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 I just want you to know. Yeah. I just want you to know. I'm not going to bully you into singing something the way I think you should sing it. But I am telling you that if you, sp if all of you, if you spin the tone consistently, you are going to create legato and color. When you don't, it's just straight. And what happens is it presses. So it's great, but it's like you're sitting in, do, you're, you're in a car and you go mm, like that. And when you mm, like that, all it does is create pressurized sound. You know, I, I make such horrible noises. All you do is create pressurized sound. And for someone who's a bass baritone, pressurized sound is like, it's horrible, okay. you know? It's not horrible. I mean, man, you have a beautiful voice, Thanks. honestly. <laughs> now you sing beautifully. You're, not hurt my <laughs> You're very sweet to say so, and I won't work to do it. <laughs> I just want you to feel, I want all of you to feel as if you are playing a violin, or a viola, or a cello. I want you to feel like you've got a bow in your hand, right? I put bow markings in my music a lot, and it's because I want music to feel like it has a direction. When you play a string instrument, bowing gives you direction, and it gives you a, a different sense of movement than singing does. Singing, we think very, very linear, linearly, which is great but it has to have a sense of constant motion. And I love to think about bowing. What direction am I gonna be going in this line? Am I, am I coming, in, do I have this feeling? Do I have this feeling? It's very, and I don't, I was a flute player. I don't know. I ask my friends for help with my bowing. I, I don't know. But I do know that when we have direction and spin in our tone, we can say so much more. And it goes beyond just me. Your voice is beautiful. No one is going to say anything otherwise, you know? It's gorgeous. But it can be nicer, it can be better than gorgeous, right? We want stunning. As gorgeous as that hair. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, that hair is gonna be your salvation and the bane of your existence. I can't get reviewed on anything else. I know, it's all about your hair, right? Wait till they start asking you to take off your shirt. Hey. <laughs> then I'll be all over, man. And screw the voice, who cares? <laughs> right? Who cares? All right, I'll give you some spin. <laughs> give me some spin. Just go, go from the top of page 12. They sit at a table. It is so, everything you're doing is so beautiful. Can you please not straighten out face? Sorry, yeah. Face. Yeah, just sing it. Then she makes her face new. Ah, it's passaggio. Let's try one more time. You know what? It is passaggio. But the thing is, is that we can, the, the key to conquering passaggio, and I know, man, <laughs> I've beaten the heck out of my passaggio so many times. The key to it is to spin, is to go from vibration to vibration. Mm -hmm. 
If you do that, Pasaja disappears. We you agree. just have to stay with, you agree? Yeah. Well, then do it. Yeah. <laughs> Why am I telling you? Can you not? That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. There's always one. And now you're the star. It's all, it's all live. Boop, beep, bop, boop. I love it. Right. Don't give me Muppet phrasing, right? Muppet phrasing is wah, 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 yeah. right? Don't do it. Yeah. Okay, well then do it. Yeah. Come on. Okay, let's do it. Then she makes her face new. Say to me, makes her face. 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 Now sing it. Then she makes her face new. You hear? You hear? Did you hear it? You hear the difference? You hear the difference? Yeah. Yes. Makes her face. English is, an, is a legato language. English is a rubato language, right? We have to think about it in the same way that we think about anything else. If you were singing this in German, would you not do that? Or would you do that? No, I, no. If I was that, <laughs> that's why I ask the questions like that. No, you would do that. You would, you, you would figure out how to make the language, you would use consonant legato, right? So con, you, any, consonant legato. So when I ask you about legato, right? What's the first thing you're gonna tell me? What is it, what is it? How do you make legato? Hmm? Connect the vowels. Connect the vowels. Very good. Whoever said breath, excellent. Connect the vowels. That's always number one. If we were playing Family Feud, ding, 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 number one answer. Is it the number one answer? No. There are, many num there are many answers to that. Everything is legato, everything. The breath that you take is what begins legato. The very first breath that comes into your lungs is what begins legato, right? Walking down the street is legato. Shaking somebody's hand is legato. Looking into the audience is legato. Everything we do is legato because legato is connection, right? So we have to think about more than just stringing the vowels along. We have to use the consonants to string the vowels along as well, right? Makes her face new, makes her face new. So you understand what I'm saying, yes? But it's connected. All right, that's the long answer. Not the wrong, the long. Yes? Could we go from orders and she orders a brandy? No. Let's go from that. Let's go from tries to smile when he leaves her. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, uh, yes. How about he holds her hand and reasons with her? That's better. Legato. And she orders a brandy and gulps it down. Then she makes her face new and goes home. Yes, I think that she. Beautiful. Beautiful. 
and honestly, Cody, it's like gilding the lily. It's a beautiful, it's, you all know what gilding the lily is, right? Yes? It's, it's beautiful as it is. It's beautiful. But when you spin the tone and you go back, you consistently spin the tone, you go back to work on this song, and I hope you look at this entire cycle. I will. You know, because it will be wonderful for you. The thing is that um, when you spin the tone consistently, then you will be able to do, you'll be able to make colors and make accents and stresses and dynamic choices that you might not have necessarily been able to do. And that will be wonderful. There, you need to get more, much more specific with the song now, you know? Right now, you're, you're at a terrific point and the work you've done in this is fantastic, both of you. Really, really beautiful, lovely music making. From, and thank you for, for introducing people to the song that may not know it. And make sure that the next time you go to a party and you're hanging with people and having a beer that you t get somebody else to sing the song. Okay? All right, thank you. Thank you so much. It's wonderful.